My name is Dr. Michelle Gerber. I'm a naturopathic doctor and a licensed professional midwife. Bacterial vaginosis, from a naturopathic perspective, actually let's just talk about in general first. Bacterial vaginosis, or BV as it's sometimes referred to. I, I get people all the time that come and say they had BV and they're like, I don't know what that is. I'm like, it stands for bacterial vaginosis. It is an imbalance in the good and bad bacteria in the vaginal area. So it's not really an infection per se. It's more of an imbalance, meaning there are some bacteria that are, I'm not even gonna say bad, they're just not supposed to be a lot of them in there. We have more bacteria in our body, the number, the number of bacteria in our body is larger than the number of our own cells. So there are, it's a very symbiotic relationship that we have with bacteria and we're really only starting to understand how that works. So in the vaginal area there are many different bacteria, lots of them. And there are some that should be there in large numbers and some that should be there in relatively small numbers. Bacterial vaginosis is when some of those that are only supposed to be there in small numbers get um, grow out of proportion and now there are more of them than there should be and less of the good bacteria by um, extension because there's only so many resources, there's only so much space. So when that happens, you end up, and it's kind of a chicken or the egg. Did the bad bacteria um, replicate a lot and that um, crowded out the good ones or were the good ones lessened for some reason and that allowed there to be space and resources for the bad ones? It's more commonly the second. Um, something has happened and there's a change in pH, there's a change in um, the, the, um, the number of good bacteria because the immune system is different. There's lots of reasons that can happen. Um, and so now there's extra room and extra resources. And some of these bacteria that are kind of opportunistic take advantage of that and they really grow and replicate. Um, some of the things that can lead to bacterial vaginosis, uh, like I said, pH changes, that can mean things like you are um, eating a very uh, sort of out, pH changing kind of diet, meaning lots of, uh, again, sugar is not a, good, not a good friend of a lot of things. The vaginal area definitely um, it doesn't respond really well to a diet really high in sugar. Um, changing the pH in the vaginal area itself by doing douching, which is not like trying to clean the area, which is not a very healthy thing. The, the vagina is a sort of um, externally moving kind of system. It is fairly self-cleaning. If you're trying to put things up in there, you can bring things in there that you don't want to have. Um, actually, sometimes for some women, having sex can do that because if you, especially if you're actually introducing semen to the area because they're pretty alkaline, the vaginal area is fairly acidic. That's why sometimes women can get them after having sex. Um, so those are some of the reasons that you can end up with an imbalance in those bacteria in that area. Um, certainly, like anything, if your immune system isn't functioning well, if you are, um, another sort of uh, thing that can contribute to that from a dietary perspective is if you are uh, not just sugar, but a lot of people are fairly low in um, the kinds of things that help to promote the good bacteria. So good healthy fiber, um, fermented foods, things like, like probiotics, which you may have heard of that you can take as a pill or as a powder, but you can also get those in your food. And there are a lot of foods, um, like yogurt, certainly most people have heard of, but there are lots of other fermented foods out there, things like um, kimchi and sauerkraut and other sort of fermented veggies, tempeh, um, kombucha, uh, lots of, um, there's one that's totally slipping my mind right now, but lots of foods out there that are fermented that you can, that can also help to promote the good bacteria in our gut, in our vaginal area, in our nasal mucosa, anywhere that kind of our body comes into contact with the outside world, we have bacteria there. Um, so those things that are in our diet that can help them to proliferate are gonna help to prevent things like uh, BV where the, the balance of the good and bad bacteria have gotten out of whack. In my office, I'm first of all making sure that it really is BV because sometimes people will think that um, normal discharge is an infection and that's a whole other topic, but um, the cervical and vaginal discharge for women changes over the course of the month and sometimes it is thicker and whiter and juicier and whatever than other times and so women sometimes will think they're having infections and it really just is their normal cervical fluid um, and that's something that um, I that that I think all women should know about and most women don't um, so I would first make sure that it really is BV and it's not normal or it's not yeast or it's not a another kind of bacterial infection or something else that isn't BV but if we know for sure that it's BV Honestly, the treatment that is 
sort of my first line treatment and most effective is the treatment that women can do at home, which is um, doing, now douching to clean, not a good idea. Sort of douching as in a light, gentle vaginal rinse with a medicine inside, if you have BV, can be really effective. Make sure that you talk to your doctor and that you really have BV before you do anything like this. But um, doing a hydrogen peroxide rinse is extremely effective for BV. You have to do it for long enough, meaning for most people that's something like two weeks or so. Um, sometimes even a little bit longer if you've had a really chronic case or a really recurrent case where it's come back and um, back and forth a lot. Um, but if you, if you stick with it for the whole time, um, then what you're doing is you're changing the pH to one that the good bacteria can survive in and the bad bacteria can't really survive in very well. For a lot of women, I find that to be more effective than any kind of um, sort of hardcore medicinal antifungal or anything like that um, because it's really just resetting the balance in the area. I will always recommend that they do some sort of probiotic as well, either through food or through a, a, some kind of supplement. Um, but the hydrogen peroxide rinse is really quite effective for it. Is that just hydrogen peroxide or is it mixed with water? It depends. Or? If I usually tell women to start out with just hydrogen peroxide and if they, sometimes if they've had it for a long time or if they have a co-infection, sometimes you can have BV and yeast or other things in the mix and the tissue is really irritated, it can be a little bit extra irritating. Um, so if they, if they do it and they find that it was irritating, then I just have them dilute it either half or do, however much we need to to get them to a place where it's not irritating. After a time, as they've reduced the numbers of the bad bacteria, they should be able to do it f on full strength without it being irritating. With any kind of treatment, but especially natural ones, meaning things that you're trying to bring the body back into balance, you want to continue the treatment for at least a few days after the symptoms have completely resolved because just because the symptoms are gone doesn't mean that there's not a small amount of imbalance still present. And if you stop at that point, you may end up with a, a, a recurrence of the infection. So you want to make sure that it's completely reset and everything is back to normal. Um, so usually two weeks, sometimes a little longer, depending on their, their symptoms and their course of the, of the disease. <sighs> Poor sugar. Um, it's not a really good thing for any kind of infection because it helps the immune system to be... Um, when you have excess of sugar in your diet, your immune system just doesn't function as well. So that's a big, a big thing. Um, and I always tell people those are things that you want to incorporate in your life for the long term because especially if this isn't your first episode of, of bacterial vaginosis, if you've had recurrence, then you're kind of susceptible to it and you need to be more mindful of those things. But for those two weeks, especially when we're doing some kind of treatment, I tell people just kind of dig in, be really strict about that kind of stuff for a couple weeks so that you can really get over it. And then you don't have to be quite as strict about that, but it's a good idea to, to from a prevention standpoint to incorporate those things in your life on a long-term kind of basis too.